So, Deus Ex is a game that I actually have quite some history with. I played this game back in its early days, not its earliest days. It came out in the year 2000. And I think I was playing it around the time between 2001 2003-ish, around that time. I don't know, it was a long enough time ago that I can't remember the specifics. So, I decided to pick it up again. I'm going to be, if I'm being totally honest, both with you guys and with myself, I don't even remember if I've beaten this game. I probably remember, I'm going to say, about 8% of it total. When I was playing this game, I was very much about the multiplayer. I wasn't too concerned with the single player, although I do know that it has a very good single player, uh, single player storyline, at least in my opinion. I remember I enjoyed it. Um, I, but again, I don't remember how much of this game I've actually played through, and I remember very, very little about it. So this is almost going to be... A re Actually, this is going to be a rediscovery of this game for me, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Before I get into the new game, I'm going to play through the training, so you guys who aren't familiar with Deus Ex, and I don't know how many of you are of the younger audience and weren't around for this game or never played it or what have you, so I don't know how many of you are actually familiar with it, but one of the first things that any Deus Ex player would experience is most likely going to be the training. So I'm going to play through that so you guys can get a feel for it. Maybe it'll be the first single video of this series, and then I'll jump into the new game aspect. But first I want to show you guys the training, plus it'll help me re-familiarize myself with the basics of the game. Anyway, I have gone through... Hang on, I think I'm going to get a transmission here. Okay. I have gone through and changed my hotkeys and things to a more modern first-person shooter setup. But before I get into any of that, let's go ahead and just continue. I figured you'd be sick of drills by now. Hopefully our training exercises will be more interesting than what they've had you doing at the academy. So that was Mr. Reyes sending me a transmission through my heads-up display. We've got a door here. Open the door by clicking the right mouse button. The right button uses items in the world. When you pick it up, it will automatically be added to your key ring. Use the key ring to unlock the door and proceed to the next area. For those of you who are familiar with Deus Ex, you may notice a few you may have already noticed a few graphical updates. I have done a little bit of graphical updating on this game through some slight modifications, but I haven't done too much. What I've done is essentially allow the game to run in 1080p, and I've given it a few of the slightly more modern updates, but I have purposely left back on a lot of the major overhauls of the game's engine, because I do enjoy the classic look of Deus Ex, but there are some things that I realize look as dated as they actually are, so I changed some of those things. I think it looks... I think it uh, really calls to the classic look of Deus Ex, while still feeling a little bit more modern. We've picked up the key, and it's added to my key ring, which is on slot zero. Or you can just mouse wheel through, if you've got multiple things. I think you can, anyway. Open the door. You're going to get a lot of equipment during these ex- Press F1 at any time to access the inventory screen, which will let you add and remove items from the tool belt. Press F2 to view your current goals and any notes you may decide to take. On a typical mission, a UNATCO agent's objectives are logged electronically so that he can stay on task at all times. Now pick up a weapon and try to break open those crates. One of them's indestructible, but the others contain things you might find useful. Here is the indestructible crate he was talking about. Can't get into that. These contain the things that we might find useful. Now pick up the lockpick and use it to open the door. Lockpicking takes time and expends the self-assembling resources of my... Just be patient and remember your training. At higher skill levels, you won't need as much time or lockpick resources to pick a lock. Doors have two strength values. The door strength tells you how much damage a door takes before being destroyed. The lock strength tells you how many lockpicks will be required to pick the lock. Some doors have an infinite strength and an infinite lock strength. That means you have to find a key. You guys getting all this? Data cube to read the 
contents. Then you activate the key mouse button, just like you activate a data cube or any object in the world. You right click on this data cube and you get a note. These are pretty much all around the game. 0012 is the key code for that keypad, which will, unlo which will unlock this door. You can access that information by pressing F2. It takes you to your notes window. So you've always got that handy. A lockpick will do me no good against this door. We have to use the keypad. You can use the computer... You can use your own keyboard's keypad for these keypads as well. Keypad up ahead. This is a finite. When a tool is depleted, it becomes useless. The manual describes other uses for the multi-tool. At higher skill levels, you'll need less time and multi-tool resources to hack a given device. So here we have a book, Unitcode Training Manual, Section 3C, Multi-Tools. A multi-tool is not really a tool at all, not in the usual sense of the word, but a disposable electronic device that utilizes electromagnetic resonance detection and frequency modulation to dynamically alter the flow of the current through almost any non-hardened circuitry. Skilled agents can use the multi-tool to manipulate code locks, cameras, autogun turrets, alarms, and other security elements. Note that multi-tools cannot be used for computer information extraction. See Section 5A, Hacking. So that gives you a little bit of hint that multi-tools are mostly for security reasons, and that computers themselves require a different skill for your character, which is hacking. And we have a data cube here. Might as well check it out. Note received. Almost done, but one quick note. I'm not exactly the expert in this sort of thing. For that, you'll have to check in with Sam Carter when you get to Liberty Island. But remember that there's any number of other ways to open a door, including explosives or finding a security computer. Again, another hint about computers and hacking. So here we have a security keypad. What this room is meant to teach you is that... Wait, actually, I thought that was Jamie here. Oh, no, that's another scientist. This here is Jamie watching me. What this room is meant to teach you is that sometimes you're going to find a door that you can't break through, that you can't pick, and it's got a security keypad. But you don't have the code. We walk up to the keypad, we have no idea what to enter here. See? But there's nothing that will actually work for us. So, you use these multi-tools to hack the electronic devices. Granted. I'm here to pick up all munitions and equipment. Thanks for the cooperation, Agent. <laughs> I like this effect. I like how this guy takes your equipment you so that... You done yet. I know! Shut up! I like how this guy takes your equipment so that you can proceed with the training. But the way they light him is very ominous. It's very dark. It's very secretive. Lying in front of you is... ...who volunteered to be rendered unconscious for this next training exercise. Highlight and search him to find the key to the medical room. Afterward, pick up his body and place it on the medical table so that one of my aides can revive him once the exercise is over. Highlight and search him using right click. I found a key, and it was added to my key ring, which again, as we know, is in slot zero. So we can use it now to unlock this door. Put up the key ring by right clicking with nothing selected. Go ahead and open up the door. Pick up the body, which would probably be a corpse or a sleeping enemy. Good work. Get someone down there immediately to revive Private Winslow. Move on to the next. Enemies in this game will notice corpses or sleeping allies on their side, just like they would in Dishonored if you watch through that playthrough of mine. So this room is to teach you that you can move those around so you stay undetected. You can bet this won't be the last time we send you into a dark room. Turn on your light augmentation and find the exit on the other side. Just press F12 by default. Now that I have remapped. I have remapped that to F, like in Half-Life 2. But I have bioelectrical energy, which you can see over there on the top left. It is limited duration, and this light takes up some of it. I'm guessing that's supposed to be a box that's actually not catching the light here. Again, this is a game from 2000. That switch turns on the lights in the room. We made it through. You're not a mech, but you're enough of a machine to need repair buffs now and then. 
If you used up some bioelectric energy getting through the dark area, for example, this contraption can charge you back up. So we'll give this robot, this repair bot, a right click. We see a window showing us how much energy we currently have, and there's a recharge button. The repair bot can restore up to 75 points of BE, or bioelectric energy, every 60 seconds. Hit the recharge button, I'm fully charged up, and in 60 seconds, it can do it again. Up to 75 points. So phase one of training is over. I've left the room where they can directly monitor me, and they will now be monitoring me through these cameras. Jump across the platforms. You'll have to crouch to get under those pipes. If you fall, use these stairs to begin again. A little bit of a training exercise to get you familiar with the jumping and crouching mechanics of movement through the world. Those wooden crates are too big to jump and too heavy to lift, so use the metal crates near the wall to build steps. To pick up a crate, walk up to it so that it highlights, then click the right mouse button. To drop something you're holding, you can press the tab key by default. Or you can just right click again. Stacking boxes to get around. Go up the ladder at the other end of the room. Pretty basic stuff. We get some complaints about this swimming obstacle because the water's contaminated. Recruits forget to grab the hazmat suit and end up in my office. Not pretty. Or they forget that they have to put the suit on by selecting it and pressing the left mouse button. Remember that the hazmat is disposable. You can wear it only once, and it operates only for a fixed duration. Use the ramp on the other side of the pool to climb out. The hazmat suit does not provide complete protection. Only partial protection through this radioactive sludge or what have you. You right-click it to pick it up, and then it goes into your suit, or into your hotbar, which you can manipulate thusly. See that? Anyway, it is... Yeah, you can use the mouse wheel. I just tried it out. It is, uh, it needs to be activated, so you've got to select it first, and then left-click to activate. Once it's running, it's got a fixed duration, which you can see over there on the right side, top right of the screen. Once again, not complete protection, but better than nothing. These medical books, normally used for quick healing, are of particular interest to you, JC, because you need a bot's help to install new augmentations. If you took any damage during the swim, now's a good time to get patched up. Little difficult to hear him. The medical bot will allow me to heal. Apparently, my left leg and my torso took the most damage while swimming through that sludge. But these bots can heal me, like so. The hazmat suit just ran out. Hand in your equipment. That's right. No cheating. This guy takes my previous equipment so I can continue with training. So now we've reached a different part of the training. Weapons training. exercise will be to learn a little about aiming and targeting. Step up to the shooting range to the west. The targets are released by using the buttons on the counter. Release the first target and take a few shots with one of the pistols until it is destroyed. Notice the targeting reticle appears when you aim at a target. Gun mechanics back in the 2000s were a little bit different, and Deus Ex did things even more differently than some other games did. We'll go ahead and select a pistol, pick up some ammunition, and then load up the pistol in our hand by pressing 1. There we go. We can now release the target by pressing this button. 
target rushes up, ready to be shot. Now, there was no... See, if I right-click, I put the gun away. There was no using your iron sights to, to aim in a game like this. Deus Ex used something different. The reticle appears... I've been standing still long enough for it not to matter. The reticle appears, and you can see that is my cone of fire right there. The more you move, the wider the cone of fire gets. Seems familiar, right? The longer you stand still, though, the more tight that cone of fire gets. Good. Firing, you will notice the reticle starts out wide and tightens as you hold. So longer you aim as a target without moving, the greater your accuracy will become. Release the second target and aim before shooting this time. The second target is now available. However, I notice my reload key actually makes me look up in Deus Ex. So let me switch that. Settings, keyboard, mouse. It's not under controls, it's under keyboard, mouse. Now I need to find reload. Or maybe it's called toggle reload. I don't know. I don't know what it actually is. Quick save and quick load, those are actually useful to know. Insert and delete, okay. Where is reload my weapon? Maybe I missed it up here. Fire, use, drop. Jump, crouch. Let me use the mouse wheel to scroll down slowly. Am I just missing it? I know that there's, there it is, reload weapon. Semicolon, wow, what a strange, what a strange setup. It is now R, reassigned from lookup. I don't need a lookup key. So there we go. And that's because this game did have mouse look <laughs> by default. So it's not like they had anticipated nobody using the mouse. That was a long reload time for a pistol. Let's go ahead and pick up some more bullets. Let's just pick up everything here. Just because there's no reason really not to. Reload it. Bring out the second target. Now this target is intended to teach you how to aim with a gun, so it appears further down the range. So we're going to let the reticle tighten as much as possible. Good work. Now proceed to the next area. Into the next room we go. I'm here to pick up all munitions and equipment. Thanks for the cooperation, Agent. Thank you, Unit Code Troop, for helping with my training. Rifle range. Here you will learn one of the ways skill level makes a difference in your accuracy. Step up to the shooting range. The targets are released using the buttons on the counter. Release the first target and destroy it with the rifle. You pull scope by pressing the left bracket key to turn the scope on. Okay, so the scope is something different. We've got a sniper rifle here. Go ahead and pick up one of those. Pick up some ammunition, load it up, and I believe I've already remapped this to middle mouse. Yes, it is. Okay. So now I've got... This is the only real kind of aiming that you get in a game like this, or in Deus Ex, at least. I can't really speak to other games of the time. But, or speak for other games of the time. Go ahead and release the first target, which comes up pretty close for a sniper rifle, right? But whenever you aim in, it's kind of shaky. If you're trying to get a shot at long range, this shakiness would make it difficult. Because that's random. That's not me moving the mouse. It's just doing that on its own. But the target is close enough for us to get a clean shot off. Now we are going to raise your skill with rifles to master level. Release the second target and destroy it. Alright. Now, artificially, the training has increased my rifle skill to master you have skill points in this game. You have certain skills that you can level up and things like that. There are certain RPG elements to it. So now, this training exercise is to show me the difference between a completely untrained rifle shooter and someone who has put many, many points into uh, rifles and therefore is, very, is a very capable sniper. That... Well, I could even snipe without going through the scope. Look how tight that reticle is. That target appears way down range. Now if I zoom in, I get no movement whatsoever. No random movement at all. It is perfectly steady. Wherever I move my mouse, that's where the gun aims. So that is what a master rifle skill will do for a player. I'll get a headshot just because. Higher skills give you better range, accuracy, and effectiveness. Proceed to the next area when you are ready. 
Hand in your equipment. This is... First you will learn to use the lamb as a proximity mine. Approach the bay window and you will see a lamb placed on the target board on the black and red wall. Press the first button next to the window and a security bot will be released. Watch as he nears the lamb. Lambs placed on the walls are proximity triggered. So we can see a lamb down there. I forget what that acronym actually is. And we can see some security bots in that bay. So the first button, the first button becomes available. We'll click on that and then we'll watch how a proximity lamb functions. This time you will place your own lamb. Take a lamb from the munitions bay and proceed to the red and black wall below. Now they give me access to explosives. <laughs> Pick up a couple of them. The doorway down here is opened. And they want me to place one myself. Yes. You've got to be very careful about placing these things. You've got to wait for your character's hand to actually do that number before you place something on the wall. Now you get out, because that is a proximity mine. Second button is available. Let's go ahead and switch to a different slot. <laughs> there we go. So that we don't actually or accidentally throw a lamb. Press the second button and we watch our newly placed lamb at work. Very good, Agent Tenton. You may proceed to the next area for more demolitions training. More demolitions training, and just in case you decided to hurt yourself, the medical bot is here. We don't need it, but it is a very much just in case feature of the room. You'll need a few extra lambs for the demolitions area. Here, catch! So this guy actually equipped me with more gear rather than taking it away. Demolitions. Next you will need to breach the doors in the hallway. Throw a lamb down to the end of the hall. Once it blows, proceed down the corridor. All right. Notice how the wooden door was destroyed and the metal and barred doors remained. Remember this for future reference. Beyond the destroyed door, you can see a damaged piece of wall you can also breach with a lamb. Try that now. Excellent. Notice that the wall is opened. Look for other weakened walls such as this, and your lamb and other explosives will allow you to breach them. Continue through that breach and on to the next section. Pretty straightforward stuff there. Explosions break things. Gotta start the next section without arms or tools. Rules are rules. But a toll is a toll. And a roll is a roll. And if we don't get no rolls, or if we don't get no tolls, then we don't get no rolls. The area beyond the door is the grenade defusing facility. Here you will learn how to remove planted explosive devices. The grenade defusing facility just does not sound good, especially with all this red lighting. At each of the corners of this area, you will find a lamp planted on the wall. You must disarm and remove all four lamps before you can proceed to the next section of training. You will need to move up to the lamp quickly and to defuse it by right-clicking. A second right-click will remove the lamp from the wall. So you can defuse enemy lambs, as we can see in these corners here, or any lamb whatsoever, because once you've placed yours, it becomes a proximity mine and it very much does not discriminate, from what I can remember at least. But you can defuse any kind of lamb by running up to it and quickly right-clicking. I've taken damage at this part before, so let's see if I can do this better. More than a decade later. <laughs> there we go. You can actually hear it beep just a little bit before I actually get to it. Ah, 
All right. A word of warning, Agent Denton. This was a simulated experience. Real lambs will not be so forgiving. You may proceed to the next area. From what I remember, these lambs actually cannot kill you. The ones in the training area cannot. Which is why he says something like that. He also makes sure to note that they may not be quite so easy in the real world. To defuse. Another medical bot, just in case. Gotta start the next section without arms or tools. Rule. Ah, the covert section. Always my worst section. Now you will learn to move quietly and conceal yourself so that you will be able to avoid the confrontation altogether. <laughs> It was around this time, when I started playing Deus Ex and going through it, that I realized that avoiding confrontations wasn't ever really much my thing. But we'll give it a try, Miss Navarra. The test is simple. Get to the far north door without being spotted by the guards below. If one of them sees you, he will sound an alarm and lock the door. So we've got a room full of guards and obstacles in here as well as cover, and a reset button so that I can keep trying if I fail. I'm not certain, I'm not going to say this for certain because I don't really remember, but I don't know if I have actually ever made it through here on the first try. UNATCO Stealth Guidelines Overview Stealth is a vital component of all UNATCO operations. When implemented correctly, stealth missions result in the lowest possible ratio of agent and civilian casualties to hostile losses. Situational awareness is key, and agents should not only be familiar with the tactical opportunities offered by their immediate environment, but how those opportunities can be exploited to their advantage with the appropriate equipment. Tech goggles, which we can see there to the right, allow agents to operate in low-light environments such as offices or labs where illumination might otherwise attract attention. With binoculars, an agent can survey an opponent's disposition and determine the best way to evade or eliminate their defenses. A rifle or crossbow equipped with a scope, or equipped with a scope, let me start that sentence over. A rifle or crossbow equipped with scope and silencing modifications can be used to interdict targets from a considerable distance, significantly compromising hostile resistance. Other features of the environment can also be used by an agent to enhance their ability to operate covertly or create useful distractions. Disabling security cameras, subverting auto guns, and reprogramming bots are all viable tactics employed by experienced agents in the field. So that gives you some general idea of how the stealth in this game works or will work once we get deeper into it. So here we've got some tech goggles, just to try them out really. This is the only pair they give you for this. I don't believe those reset. Alright, and I do believe I left my lean keys as they are. You know, I never used leans in games before I played Dishonored very recently, but now I do intend to make good use of it here in Deus Ex. Remember, don't let the guards see you. Use the No letting guards see me. Okay, so there's that guy. One thing I don't have here that I did have in Dishonored, though, is dark vision. JC Denton, though his vision is augmented, does not have dark vision. Now here, we can throw things to let us make it across the room. To distract. Hang on, I heard something. I think everybody heard something. That's, there's some armor right there. I'm actually not going to go for it because I know the exit is this way. Or I thought. Oh, whoa, whoa. This guy almost spotted me. Always remember the four basic tactics to avoid detection. Crack. Stay behind enemies. Move slowly to avoid making noise. And use shadows to con. Every possible. All right. So I used previous knowledge to help me get through here. This technically count. I have visual. This technically counts as a success, even though I just got caught there. I wanted to go back and check out that body armor, just because I haven't used it in a while. Oh no, he he didn't fully notice me. Let's go. All right. As a further stealth test, now I'm pretty sure not many have done this. 
I'm actually going to go back for the sake of the video and pick up that body armor just so we can experience that. Because, as I said, I don't remember a whole lot about this myself. So this will further test my stealth abilities. Also, we'll use these. Ooh, it looks cool. I never really made much use of this either. Because we've got both guards approaching from both hallways. Let's go ahead and just stack ourselves in the corner here. Wow, those goggles didn't last too long, did they? That guy walked away. This guy is also walking away. I can hear his footsteps. His peripheral vision did not catch me. I need this. Hear that? Everybody check weapon. Bottles, plants, flasks, many things will work. This is thermoptic camo, but I... This is thermoptic camo, but I don't remember what it does, actually. I think that prevents me from being seen by electronics such as cameras and security robots. It is thermoptic camo, so their heat vision wouldn't be able to detect me while wearing it. I believe that's what it does. Anyway, we see how the stealth works here. Very good. I hope you remember this lesson. They have assigned us to be partners, and I will not stop to hold your hand and repeat myself when we are facing a real enemy. Now for the last test. You have to find a way across the river to the exit on the other side. There's more than one way to get there, depending on your approach and the skills you want to use. It's up to you. Enemies. The crosshairs... Neutrals. So... There are a number of ways that I can actually get across to the objective. Now one thing about Deus Ex and games of this era is that there weren't objectives, like objective markers. You had to pay attention to things like briefings and such. So I'm sneaking around here. And I cannot ooh, and I cannot lift this barrel, but I see a data cube. Hey JC, want to cross the water? Lower the bridge. The code is 0089. It's either that or get all wet. Whoa, I don't want to attract too much attention, so I better be careful. They're monitoring me up there. That security bot is going to cross... not this way. Alright, so I can actually run here. What is this? Okay, I've got a pistol. They've got things laying around this area. Now whoever plays this game can play it however they like. Ooh, a multi-tool. That could come in handy too. You can go full guns a-blazing, which is what I used to do. Or you can play it very stealthy and spy-like. That security bot is headed this way. Now what was the code to that? I believe you said it was 0089. We'll press F2 as we learned earlier to open up our notes screen. And you get the most recent note up at the top, 0089. Alternatively, if I had not found that data cube, I could use the multi-tool to hack that keypad and lower the bridge. And even further alternatively, I believe you can dive into the water, swim, and try and find an another way out. But I need to get that bot to- whoa, wow, that bot has long vision. That bot kinda noticed me. And no, I don't think I can hack the bot with a multi-tool. I'll crouch, I'll crouch, I'll crouch. I just need him to turn around and go the other direction, that's all I need. I do have to wonder if he's going to come this way. He is. Now if he turns around, he'll spot me. I wonder if he'll spot me while leaning. Doesn't seem he will. Then again, I don't know if he would have spotted me here anyway. So now I can sneak up behind and hope he doesn't stop and turn around. 0089 on the keypad. Sneak by. I wonder what's in that little area. Let's search that first, just because I'm curious. Oh, this is probably just the way back up. Oh, and there's an explosive barrel here that we can use to take out the bot. Uh oh, this is bad. This is bad. He's going to spot me. This is actually horrible. Oh, I might be able to hide back here if I'm careful enough. If I can push that barrel out into his way... I, I mean, I can already complete this challenge just by... 
Oh. I can already complete this challenge just by opening up that keypad, dropping the bridge, and getting to the exit. But I want to illustrate all the different ways that this can be done. I see a ladder right there. So if I need to... If I need to dive into the water to get away from him, I can. Oh, I can push this barrel, but it's too heavy to lift, and I can only barely push it. Destroying him will not be the easiest thing. There's another little division over there. Boxes and crates and things that I want to use. Or that I want to go check out, at least. And this is all just training. All of this is going on, and it's all just training. Nothing actually in the cardboard boxes. Okay, well, we're not going to blow up a bot today, it seems. Pushing that barrel would take way too long. Let's just run across, maybe? Or just keep sneaking and he won't see me? Looks good. hologram for more info. When you're through, go out the opposite door. These are UNATCO troops. I am one of UNATCO's experimental troops. These guys are your standard grunts, the guys on the ground, the common man. NSF are the terrorists that the UN, through UNATCO, is attempting to defuse. I called the UNATCO troopers the common man, but they're not really. They are soldiers. They are fighters. They are troops. But compared to nano augmentation, they really are. They really are a step below. That is one of those security robots that we found in the previous area. And he gave us some information on how to deal with them if we come across them. And here is a smaller version. An inexpensive security bot. A favorite of third world countries and corporate security divisions. Not so mobile, but don't be fooled. We've lost plenty of agents to its well-armored assault gun. Like other bots, it's difficult to damage with ordinary bullets. Difficult, but not impossible. They can be taken out with ordinary bullets in a pinch, I think. <laughs> Those things, however, are very powerful. Electronics and servo mechanics. A maintenance nightmare. I'm in my office in the med lab. The old nanotechnology. Very much cyborg-like, with robotics actually showing. And this is nano-augmentation, which is what J.C. Denton, which is who we will be playing as as the protagonist, and his brother, Paul Denton, are the first in line, first of that line. Sufficiently impressive, an early success for the whole organization. Thanks. You from the United Nations? Your augmentations are a go. The real test comes next. Active duty. I'm ready, sir. Yes. Yes, you are. And Bob Page is apparently pleased with my performance and is ready to send me out into the field.
And that does it. That is the training complete. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and continue this game. Try and make a full playthrough of it if I can. And we'll see where this goes. I hope you guys enjoyed this particular little bit, this little bit of insight into the actual game itself. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.